What? <sighs> what is up guys? Today is going to be an amazing day. Do you know why? The sun is out. You're watching a Cruz Katarski video, so can't get any better than that. And since you guys enjoyed my video where I talked about how I unlocked the straddle planche, I thought why not do it again, but with a different skill, which is going to be the front lever. So today I'm going to give you all of the tips and all the knowledge that I acquired on my journey to unlocking the front lever. So quickly, before we go outside to go training, we got to get a little pre-workout snack in. Need a little bit extra fuel today to really Pump it up. So let's, let's go. So if you're a fan of the channel, you know that I'm not a very big fan of caffeine pre-workouts that like a majority of people do. Caffeine makes my head wanna like explode, not in a good way. So for my pre-workout, I enjoy some honey. This is some next level stuff. You'll thank me later. Honey has been acquired. Mm, 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 mm. I got my headphones on. I just, oh, one second, there's something. All right, I think I got it. Oh, look at that. Smooth transition, man. Thank you. All right, so I am all warmed up. Got my mic plugged in. A lot of my neighbors right now just decided to do some yard work. Anyways, do you see this? This is gonna be the first tip or the first reason onto why I was able to unlock the front lever. And that is because I invested into some dip bars, also known as equalizer bars or some tall parallettes. All these pretty much mean the exact same thing. And the main reason for this is because training front lever on a low bar compared to like a pull-up bar, like a much taller bar is so much easier. You can lower yourself into a front lever instead of when you're on a pull-up bar, you have to like raise yourself into a front lever, which might not sound, you know, too different. I'm pretty sure it's like 200% stronger. That's that's why it just feels so much easier on a low bar when you can lower yourself into it. But I highly recommend you invest into some low bars, some dip bars, some equalizer bars, any of those. You can get them fairly cheap. But yeah, that's a, that's tip number one. I'm so far off the ground. All right, so tip number two, which is very connected to tip number one, that is called greasing the groove. So the reason why I got myself a pair of tall parallettes because I can grease the groove, which if you don't know what that is, it pretty much means just training the skill throughout the day. When I got myself a pair of these tall parallettes, put them in my room and every you know hour or two, I would attempt the progression that I can do best. And as I just kept greasing the groove, your body gets used to it pretty quickly. From advanced tucks, I was able to start doing single leg and then from single leg, I started doing like full temps. Yeah, the front levers is one of those skills that you don't have to warm up very vigorously and just go in, practice some holds throughout the day. That's a big thing that I did. And this also works if you have have like a door frame pull up bar in your room that's pretty much greasing the groove Leave it all over again we gonna break up then we make up act like we're gonna be friends there's a fire take me higher the high bar is literally what I first started training the front lever for. The first like three or two to three months, I only had this pull-up bar. So I was training on there and my progress was super slow. I just decided, you know what, Cruz, just buy yourself some dip bars and practice the front lever. After I bought those, my progress exploded exponentially a lot faster. It still took quite a while because, you know, the front lever is a pretty hard skill, but it would have taken me a lot longer if I just stuck to only the high bar. We gon' break up, then we make up Act like we're gonna be friends There's a fire, take me higher Leave it all over again, all over again All right, so the third thing I did to help me progress and learn the full front lever, and that is around breaking through plateaus. So a way that I circumvent that, big boy word right there, I don't even know if I used it right, but a way that I broke through many of my plateaus is because I spent so much time on the low bar. Actually going back to the high bar to break through plateaus is a very good way to do it. Like I said, high bar is really high, or is really hard. Step back from your from your dip bars for maybe a month or so and only train front lever on the high bar, try and get really good at that. And then a month later, you go back to your dip bars and you'll realize that you've just broken through a plateau because you've gone from something really hard to a lot a lot easier. Near the end of the video, I'll give you guys a bunch of my top tier, S tier exercises to unlock the front lever. Hurt 
my heel. Anyways, the fourth tip, AKA the fourth thing I did to help me achieve my front lever. And you're gonna hear it all the time whenever I talk about learning new skills. And that is just be patient. I personally, I would say I was like, I was pretty patient, but also I rushed a few things. So it's pretty normal. Wanting to learn it as fast as possible is just human nature. You wanna get the front lever and impress your friends. But when you try to rush stuff, you're gonna skip through progressions. You're gonna lack a lot of the strength you need to hold the skill in a good way, which at the end of the day is not very good. So it's important to enjoy the journey and take your time to perfect and strengthen all the right muscles to you really get that straight front lever line. Take your time with it, enjoy the journey. If, if this calisthenics thing is something you wanna do for the rest of your life, then why, why are you trying to rush everything? <laughs> Just take your time, enjoy the journey. You're gonna get the front lever eventually. Why not make sure that when you do get it, you have it in perfect, pristine form? Calisthenics is hard. A lot of people just quit. They just can't deal with the intense training it takes to like have no progress for so long, but you stick to it and eventually you break through and get that skill that you want. If you're determined, like I know you are, stick to it, be patient, enjoy the journey, and you'll get the full front lever one day. All right, so the moment you've all been waiting for, the S tier best exercises to learning the front lever, in my personal opinion. And I'm also gonna give you guys some of the most overrated exercises that you definitely wanna like avoid and don't do those. Let's start off with the best ones first. They're in no particular order. All five of these that I'm about to mention are excellent. So yeah, the first one is going to be weighted pull-ups. This one is a no bueno. You, you gotta do weighted pull-ups. It is one of the best ways to increase your overall pulling strength and is a very, direct correlation between people that have a high weight of pull up and people that can do a front lever. The higher your weight of pull up is, the higher the chance you have a full front lever. And then number two is going to be advanced tucked rows slash pull ups. This one is a favorite of mine. I spammed this exercise as soon as I unlocked it. I just kept doing it. It is so good at increasing your pulling strength. And it's also a pretty specialized pulling movement. It's like horizontal pulling that, you know, is good for learning the front lever, as well as front lever pull-ups, if that's something you wanna do after learning the front lever. But yeah, it's just, it's just an amazing exercise. It gives you that dynamic exercise that you need to learning the front lever and not just doing static holds all the time. Speaking of static holds, number three, the third one, is going to be assisted front lever holds. This one, it was just like, you gotta start doing these. Get yourself a resistance band and start freaking doing some assisted holds. People have probably learned the full front lever just using resistance bands and just like decreasing the strength of the band as you get stronger. Honestly, that's not the best way to do it is just use it as a tool to help activate the right muscles and learn the form use the resistance bands to you know at the end of a workout when you're pretty tired to add some more volume to your workouts or second to last it's going to be attempts on the high bar and low bar you have to spend some time doing these attempts to really get the skill if you're not going to do the attempts you're not going to you're not going to know what you're doing right what you're doing wrong it gives you a good sense of where you are <laughs> in the progress like if you're close if you're very far no, knowing what to work on. So yeah, do attempts. And number five is going to be a little bit optional, especially for someone like me. And that is going to be dragon flags. This one is directly strengthening your core. And I know a lot of people can get a lot of benefit uh, from this exercise because it's so like close to actually being a front lever. However, for me personally, the way that I have to set up and do dragon flags, it really hurts my elbows my elbow my elbow tendons so i can't do them too often for you if it doesn't hurt you at all doesn't hurt your elbows it is definitely a great exercise to strengthen the, the core and get you a strong strong six pack to hold the front lever all right, so now the exercises that I find are a little bit overrated, a little bit not really necessary to do. I find there's just a lot better exercises to do instead, like the ones I just showed you, you know? And the first one is going to be ice cream makers. I believe that's what it's called. It's where you're like at the top of a pull-up bar and you like go down into a front lever. I find this exercise so bad. I've tried it many times. I don't find it really helps with front lever at all. I see a lot of people doing it and it's like, bro, what are you doing? I could only think of a couple exercises because there's not that many like bad exercises. I just find these two are just really not that great. And that's going to be upside down deadlifts or reverse deadlifts. People call them either things. I see Chris Heria doing this very often. I'm not a big fan of this. I think I've only done it like twice in my life. No, not a fan. Sorry, Chris Heria. A lot of your information is good, but this exercise is just not good. If you can't do the ones that I completely showed you, do easier versions of them, but just doing the idea of the exercises that I showed is just 
the best way to learn it, in my opinion, of course. All right, and that's gonna wrap up the workout. My back is pretty freaking tired, sore. Not really sore, it's tired. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna go upstairs. We're gonna go eat some food. All right, lunch has been made. We're just gonna have some chicken wraps with some homemade chipotle mayo. Mm. All right, here's the taste test that you guys are begging for. <sighs> calm down, calm down. It's... Oh my God. Anyways, that is going to wrap up the video. I hope you guys got some very big brain knowledge from this front lever video. If you are working towards it, I'm rooting for you. You got this. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If you want to see him fully detailed on like specific exercises on how to progress the front lever and not just my experience, you can click this video right here where I do like a full breakdown tutorial on the full front lever. But yeah, without further ado, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Peace out.